When I bought my 2004 Lamborghini Gallardo, it, it wasn't for YouTube clicks. If anything, buying this car had an adverse effect on my channel because people are used to me buying nice hoopties. I bought the nicest one that I could find instead of buying the cheapest example. I went and bought the nicest, most expensive example because I wanted the car for myself. I wanted a worry-free, drama-free experience, mostly for myself, but also to show that I'm not a complete idiot all the time when it comes to car purchases. But unfortunately, it seems this Gallardo has caught some cooties from the other hoopties. Yeah, time flies. It's been almost six months since I bought this 2004 Lamborghini Gallardo. I actually traded in my 2012 McLaren MP412C towards this, which was a big downgrade in speed and technology. I ditched twin turbos and 2.9 second zero to 60 fancy doors and the latest infotainment system for a gated manual, very slow old supercar that still has a cassette deck inside of it. And that's exactly what I wanted. I wanted a car that was a little more engaging to drive at normal speeds. The McLaren, it was just so easy to drive and at normal speeds it was almost boring. The fact that this is slower and a manual transmission and has that crazy exhaust note makes this a lot more fun to drive at slower speeds. But also I wanted a car that was more serviceable. In my original video, I talked about how this guy does share so many parts with Volkswagen Audi cars that is really simple to fix and just about anybody can work on it. Also, if any issues crop up, you can plug it in and just about any car scanner can read the fault codes because it has an Audi Volkswagen based software running the whole thing. It, it turns out I was wrong. This Lamborghini really wanted to make me out to seem really stupid. It all started very early into the ownership of my Gallardo. I brought it home from Denver, no issues. But then my friend Freddy Tavares Hernandez came to town and he wanted to drive this car because he had never driven a pristine original Gallardo. He has that crazy twin turbo thing that he rebuilt himself. And that car is so fast, so crazy, clutch is so heavy. It, it's, it's a death trap. It is not fun to drive at all. And just kept talking about how slow it was despite the fact that it was a much more usable, civilized car. Still, he liked it, and after he drove it, we stopped for gas. I immediately got back in the driver's seat, turned it on, and I was greeted with the warm glow of the check engine light, just, just like all the hoopties. Only 4,000 miles this thing had on it. It's a museum piece. It's the perfect Gyarado, and the check engine light has popped on. This caused Freddy to laugh uncontrollably. Still, I wasn't mad because I figured it'd be really easy to figure out what went wrong. We just plug it in, we get the codes, and then I go to the Volkswagen dealer, get the parts, and everything would be fine. But as I said earlier, this Lamborghini is determined to prove that I am a complete moron, and that wasn't the case. The wizard plugged in his scan tool by mechanic, and it wouldn't read codes. Turns out this Lamborghini still runs on an old Lamborghini scan tool system. If it was a few years newer, this wouldn't have been an issue, and it wouldn't give the wizard any codes. Which goes back to the main reason why I wanted to get rid of my McLaren, not just because this is more engaging to drive at normal speeds, but also because this car could be fixed anywhere. Whereas my McLaren, which had an extended warranty, couldn't be fixed anywhere. I'd have to ship it 300 miles away to get fixed every time it had a hiccup. And then I would be without the car for weeks. I'd have to deal with the cost of transporting it there and back. It was just a massive pain. And now it's facing the exact same prospect with this Lamborghini Gallardo. But instead of doing that, I decided to do what most owners do with the check engine light when it comes on their 2004 car, usually in a Hyundai Elantra or a Saturn View though, they just, they just keep driving it that way. <laughs> Yes, I drove this thing around for months and put over a thousand miles on it, just like any other hoopty owner would do with the check engine light on. Ugh, and not just one check engine light, there's multiple check engine lights on all the time with this thing, the little amber one that's the normal check engine light, but also in a little LCD readout, I have errors for both banks. The Lamborghinis run on two different computers. They control both sides of the V10 engine, and it is flashing for banks one through five and six through 10. That's continuous. I can't make it go away. It's just flashing at me nonstop. Quite annoying, but Freddie mentioned before he went back to Florida that he has a bootleg version of the Lamborghini software needed to diagnose this car. If I had bought a Lamborghini Gallardo that's just a few years newer, I wouldn't have this issue, but Freddie was going to save the day and send me the laptop. Unfortunately, he couldn't get that laptop to work, so I was out of luck. I actually looked up the cost of buying an actual real Lamborghini diagnostic computer myself and used that was $10,000. $10,000, which prompted me to keep driving this thing with the check engine light on. But still, it drives really well, as you can see. 
goodness. <laughs> That's so good. So I, I wasn't that worried. I figured I would wait until it was due for its annual service or something major broke and then I could ship it off to get fixed at the Lamborghini dealer. Still annoying, but not the end of the world. But then I caught a little bit of luck. Well, a, a lot of bit of luck, which we're going to the lucky place right now. Johnny, how's it going? It's going, how are you? Good seeing Good. you. Good. Looks like you've got the BMW all back together. This was all torn apart all the way down to the timing chain sprocket showing. And now we're back and we're running, right? Yep, very smooth, yep. So about a week ago, I was here checking on my BMW. I happened to be driving my Lamborghini and I told Johnny about my issue at the check engine light that I couldn't figure out what was wrong. Now Johnny's just opened up this shop. He's gone into debt up to his eyeballs, buying equipment and everything else. And he has the latest and greatest scan tool. And he said, I bet my scan tool can pull codes. I was like, I didn't think so. I was skeptical, but sure enough, it pulled codes and those codes were, you remember? Tank, tank vent valve. The tank vent valve, yes. And the uh, exhaust temperature sensor. Right, two things. Mm -hmm. And with a few minutes of Googling, we were able to figure out what parts we needed to replace. And where do those parts go? Ah, right here. So what do we have here? These are the tank vent valves. This is a temperature sensor? Yeah. It looks like some kind of probe that aliens would use. Even though we were able to scan the car and pull codes, this Lamborghini is still out to make me look like a moron because these parts are both exclusive to Lamborghinis. They're not Volkswagen Audi parts. This temperature probe is Lamborghini Gallardo exclusive. It's only for the Lamborghini Gallardo. They don't make them for Volkswagens or Audis. And these tank vent valves, so it's shared with the later Lamborghini Diablo and the older Lamborghini Murcielago. So everything I said, I guess, is completely wrong. Well, sort of, we were able to scan it, but uh, now I'm gonna still prove that anybody can work on these cars and that includes me, and I am the absolute worst mechanic in the world. Johnny was kind enough to let me use his facilities to try and put in this temperature probe myself. I really appreciate it. Well, I'll let the hospital know nearby. You're oh, here, so yeah, yeah that's happens. probably yeah. a good idea. Yep. So <laughs> let's get started. So I did my homework before, and I know that the tank vents are somewhere underneath this, this pretty plastic in this very warm engine bay that I just drove over here. Hopefully it's easy to reach. Deep back behind this silver thing, there are two little vents for the tank, which, Johnny, what do these things do? I have them right here in my hand. They look like- Basically, they just uh, recirculate your fumes from the tank to the intake manifold. And they need to be smart somehow to open and close at the right time. Kind of so, pulsate. They kind of look like an illegal pipe of some kind. I don't want to say what kind, but, and it is actually pretty reachable with these covers off, so could be worse. No hospital trip yet. Nope, you're doing good so far. So. And I'm already defeated by <laughs> the clamps and it slides out somehow, I can't figure it out. So Ninja is climbing on top of my Lamborghini engine. That's one way to get close to it. I was gonna grab mirrors, but you're just sticking your whole uh -huh. head in there. 10 millimeter. Here he goes again. Got a really high kick there, like a ninja <laughs> or a rocket. I picture this is exactly how Valentino Valboni used to work on Lamborghinis there at the factory. Just, just like this. How's it going in there? I'm hot as hell. It is hot, yes. Yeah, spooning my engine now. <laughs> you almost got it? Yeah, there you go. You got it. I think you can do it now, can you? I, I hope I can handle it from here. Yep. Nice. Good luck. You got it? Yep. Well, clearly this car is out to make me even more of a moron because Really, anybody can work on this car if you're an acrobat. Small enough. If you're, yeah, if you're a circus performer in a past life or something. Yeah. So what's next? The probe? Yep. So we have to take the air boxes air box off box. to reach the probe, and I've pretty much given up on working on it. He's so fast that I, it, 
I'm just gonna sit and watch and then pay him because that's that's what you should do with these. I'm, I'm an idiot. Look at this. I've never seen deep into the Gallardo before. There's the shifter setup for the transmission. It's super cool. But we're having an issue of which temperature probe thing it is, right? Because there's one here. There's one here. There's more? Yep. Up the front. One. Oh, one on either side in the front and the back. So what do we do? I guess we don't guess. The 25% odds aren't very good. No, nah, so we'll <laughs> get the uh, ohm meter and then start ohming one by one. I see. Okay. Ohm. So the ohm test, inconclusive, huh? Yep. We ohm all three sensors, including the new one, and none of them is faulty. So they're all the same. They're, they're all putting same, out the yep. same ohm. So they're not broken. Mm -hmm and there's no active code, so then yeah. what's next? Just drive it? Drive it and see. So that just means the $150 solenoids and whatever you're gonna charge me for your acrobatic moves there, and, and I'm back in business. So I've been complaining about this car the entire video and how it made me out to be a moron, but really, six months of ownership and just this, that's, that's pretty good for 2,000 miles of driving. Mm -hmm. So I, I should be happy, I, I am happy. And these tank vent valves are actually shared with the later Lamborghini Diablo, the later Lamborghini Diablo, can't tank talk. Diablo, Diablo, Diablo. The later Lamborghini Diablo, the later Lamborghini Diablo, whoa, here it goes, <laughs> here it goes. The later Lamborghini Diablo and the, the later, La whoa, and the new, <laughs> see? It's not easy to YouTube. The, here, hold it up again. 